for the presentation. For their word uh, and dance, uh, which is important for us. There are many ways and expressions we can honor God, not just by preaching or teaching and living, but by praising Him through dance. And the message is still one that He is pleased uh, with. This morning, if we will stand, we will receive the Word of God. Amen. And I won't be long. Amen. Russell, I have a 12-15 tea time. All right, now. There you go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. For real. Come on, man. I knew you would like that. Amen. 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 But I won't be long today. I want us to, if we can, turn our attention to, if you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. And we'll give you one. Please raise your hand. We'll give you one. You will need one this morning. And the 21st Psalm. If you return to the 21st Psalm. And you will read from the King James Version. This wonderful message. God has given us. Thank you, Judah. Praise. Amen. 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 For singing the way you do and honoring God and for your preparation, your proclamation, and it's pleasing uh, in God's sight. Amen. If you're there, say amen. 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 Thus saith the Lord from the 21st Psalm, the King James Version. <coughs> Excuse me. The King shall joy in the strength, O Lord, in thy strength, O Lord. And in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. <clears throat> Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholding the request of his lips. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou sentest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest to him. And it even lived the days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation, honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the most high, he shall not be moved. Amen. Thy hand shall find out all thy enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those who, that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a, imagined a mischievous deep device which thou art not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, for thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon the strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, and in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before we pray, let me thank uh, Steve uh, Stewart. Amen. 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 What he sees in me. Amen. 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 And we went on and we saw the video and our hearts are pleased uh, to know that God uh, will raise up someone Amen. who will speak his word Amen. and bring truth to power. Amen. And I like the mirror illustration, the one broken and the one whole one that yes. God Amen. is finished with us. Amen. John says we'll see him. Just like, and we'll look just like him when we see him. Amen. But right now, he's putting everything together and getting us ready to do so. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name and your spirit, we thank you for this day, June 23rd, 2019. Thank you because it's a day we've never seen before. Day we'll never see again. God, we're so grateful for watching over us last night the way you have. Yes. Provided for us the touch from your finger to allow us to awaken. And God, we found desire and intention in our heart to come and lift you up today, to bring praise and honor and glory. That someone sitting amongst us may be looking for you and we're the testimony that you are yet 
still alive. Yes. So we thank you, God, for the sunshine. We thank you for the rain. And God, we ask that you continue to help the farmers, God, as they begin and desire to plant, yes. that the S-U-N would hold up, would stay up, and yes. the R-A-I-N would diminish yes. so that they yes. can have crops that come forward. Ultimately, God, we pay the price at the cash register. Yes. So we ask that you intercede yes. on that behalf as well. Thank you for these that are here, those that have desire to come. Bless the Brown family as they travel. Bless Mom Thomas, God, as she is trying to get her body recovered uh, and touch her with your love and with your strength uh, this day. And we're grateful for this opportunity. Now hide us behind your cross. Keep us under the dripping of your blood. Across our hearts and our minds, write these words found in the Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, 21st verse. Sir, we would see Jesus. It's him who is worthy of our praise. And in his name we pray. And for his sake, amen, 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 amen. amen. This morning, uh, we want to talk from briefly from this uh, title, Declaration of Praise. Declaration of Praise. Declaration of Praise. Find a neighbor and say, neighbor. He wants to talk about declaration of praise. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. He wants to talk about declaration of praise. Amen. I'm going to be awake now. Amen. I am too, Joseph. Amen. Amen. Because God is in this place. Yes, he is. For a brief moment, uh, let's define declaration. And, and we'll show you where we're going with this piece. Declaration is a formal or explicit statement. It's an announcement, a proclamation, a notification, and a disclosure. Uh, the synonyms, uh, uh, Danielle, because uh, I know you're a teacher, are uh, affirmation, assertion, asseveration, avouchment, avow, a uh, claim or insistence. It's a profession, uh, it's a protestation, uh, of words and so a declaration introduces and allows us to understand something had to happen mom robbie for the individual to have a declaration in other words you just don't come up with a declaration on your own there has to be a reason or a why you are declaring something that has happened in your life and so the text right off jump street uh teaches us that, that in this moment, we will see a declaration of praise. It's an announcement. It's David making a proclamation and a notification, an explicit and formal statement uh, about his approval for what God has done. Anytime you have praise, which all the words, there are many words and derivatives to it, Hillary, but praise, Janice, is that we're telling God Two things. One, we're satisfied with who he is. That's right. All right. Yeah. The next one is we approve Amen. of everything he does for us. So when we start praising him, Amen. we're satisfied with who he is in our lives, and then we approve of everything he does. And I figured it out, Henrietta, why some people don't praise him because maybe because they're not satisfied with who he is. Come on. Or maybe they're not satisfied with what he's done. Yeah. But Nicole, just because he woke me up, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, it's a brand new day. That's a reason for me to be satisfied and I approve already before my feet hit the floor what God has about to do. I feel like I miss God. That's right. That's right. I feel like talking about him. All right. All and right. he's worthy yes, he is. of the praise yes. Yes. just because he woke me up. Mm -hmm. We haven't used an alarm clock for years in our home. Only because we know God is the alarm. Amen. No one wakes us up but him. Sometimes you'll be past the alarm you're not listening for it. Or you'll hit snooze and you still won't move. Right. Amen. Somebody, I'm talking on somebody's street. Amen. But this is a declaration, Elder Marshall, a reason and a statement uh, formally on why David wants to give God the satisfaction in his life and the approval that he has for God. Now, 
we cannot just jump into 21 without looking at 20, because 20 is a companion to 21. And the code 20 will tell us the reason why David has a proclamation, uh, a declaration of praise in his lips. So, so if you look at chapter 20, just one pew back, amen. The first, in, in 20A, should tell you, 1A should tell you something. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Yes. That's where he starts. This is the reason why he has a declaration of praise, Jordana, because the Lord heard him in his day of trouble. Yes. Anybody in here familiar with the day of trouble? Come on. Amen. I think I can cover every seat, smallest to the tallest. All of us have had trouble and a day of it that we had to deal with it. So let me make it plain, Nicole, this is the type of trouble that you and I can't go to Chase Bank, withdraw yeah. some money, lay it on the table, and trouble just goes away. Come on. This is not the type of trouble I can go to Walmart, walk up and down the aisle with my cart and put something in my cart, pay for it, and it's all fixed, Mom Robbie. I can't even go to Lowe's and find a tool that will help me fix the problem or the trouble that I'm dealing with. Amen. This is the type of trouble where David is in, in time of war. And war in this specific uh, context deals with the Assyrian army. And I'll tell you a little bit about the Assyrian army. You'll see in verse 5, I think it is, uh, or down the end where some believe, a uh, 7, that some trust in chariots and some in horses. The idea is that their army, Russell, was the most feared army in this time. Only because, and you and I think horses and chariots, that's all they had? Well, back then, that's all they needed. Amen. This, this is like a stealth plane in our day. This is like top military uh, machinery, Nathan, in our time. And, and, and the, the, the best that the United States had, Assyria had it in their day. And so they were a mean fighting machine. Nobody could keep up with the horses and the chariots and they were just destroying people and David, Jacob, is up against this army. And so he says in the day of trouble, I call it the DOT. Mm -hmm. okay. Not the Department of Transportation, <laughs> but the day of trouble, Danielle, and for the day of trouble, you ought to have a DOP. Mm -hmm. That's a declaration of prayer. <laughs> So he says in, in, in the name of the God of Jacob, I'm just going to use verse 1 and, and then move in 20. And the reason why he cites the God of Jacob, because he knows that God is in covenant relationship with his people. Mm -hmm. So he says, listen, God, in the day of trouble, I need you to hear me based on the covenant you've made with your people. In other words, God is not a man who's going to take his promise and break it and lie to us. He will keep it, whether it's the day of trouble or the day of no trouble. You can trust God to fulfill his word, to dot every I, to cross every T, to show up and to show up, right. to provide for you, to protect you, Come to on, deliver Reverend. you, yeah. to make sure Come on, Reverend. that he's still the same God Hallelujah. he was yesterday, he'll be today and for. Evermore. And so David slips into this verse, uh, chapter 20, church. Uh, he is asking God. And, and, and what he's waiting for is a response from God. And verse 20, in chapter 21, here comes the response. And so what we can't see and what we may not be reading or cannot find in the pages is God answered his prayer. Mm -hmm. And so verse 21, Nicole, uh, chapter 21 is David's response to God answering his prayer. Mm. Everybody ought to have a response when God answers our prayer. That's right. That's right. There ought to be a declaration of prayer. Listen, Mom Sandy, even if God doesn't give us what we're asking for, it's still a reason to pray. Come on, Reverend. I believe a long time ago, Mom, did something that when I can't trace his hand, I can trust his heart. And I know he's still on the throne. But here he is, and let me get some quotes, and, and we'll move on. Here are the quotes uh, for praise. Don't allow the enemy to stop you from praising God. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's only something or someone against the will of God will stop you from praising God. And Malaysia, every chance I get, I need to keep praising him, not only in the bad and the good times, but in the bad times. Amen. you got to praise him in the bad times. Amen. It your praise will change the atmosphere. Amen. 
even in the bad times, Dory, even when one plus one Nathan is five, still find a way to praise him. Thank God I can count and still add, even though the math ain't adding up. I feel like talking to him. I missed y'all so much. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, don't allow the enemy to stop you from praising God. God gave us, I like this one here, 86,400 seconds today. That's 24 hours. Come on. Have you used any of them to Come say on. thank you? Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 86,400 seconds. All right, I better move from that one. Number next, <laughs> praise God for all the ways you see him working, then trust him for the ways you Come know. on, amen. See, this is a declaration of praise. We just want to give him thanks today for the journey thus far. And, and can I help you with this? When I was uh, um, down home in Virginia, and I'm sitting in this little church, and I'm thinking about uh, uh, the patriarchs and the matriarchs who have come before this church and have established it, and now it, it, it's old and, and there's not many members there. But for those, and then I thought about my own life and what God has done after turning 62 years old. Uh, <laughs> and being married, did y'all hear that? No. After turning 60, I'll broadcast. After turning 62 years old, you reflect and you sit on your birthday and think of it. Whether you're 12, 26, or 62. Amen. You gonna sit and think about some things on your birthday. That's right. Amen, somebody. Amen. On your arrival day, it causes you to reflect on where you are and what God has done. And then I thought about 36 years of marriage, Nathan. I'm sitting there, tears rolling down my eyes, and I'm thanking God, and I just wanted to praise Him for all He has been, Amen. not what He's done. That's all right. He has been in yeah. those moments. Yeah. And I, my I'm son can look back on me, and no, I don't yeah. think about how I got over. Yeah. I know it was Him. Who brought us this far? Right. I know, Skip, it'll be him who will take us on, and it'll be him who will see in the end. I'm convinced of it, I'm persuaded. No one can change my mind that I know God is worthy Come on, of Reverend. all Come on, the praise. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. So that's why he drove us to this text. And so what the word says, and I continue to give you these uh, uh, um, quotes, put a smile on your face. Praise on your lips and hold on to your faith. Yeah. 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 Happy moments, praise God. Difficult moments, seek God. Quiet moments, worship God. Painful moments, trust God. Every moment, thank God. Amen. 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 This is a celebration today. I just want to celebrate who he is. Amen. And when you praise God, that's the quickest way to change right. your atmosphere. Come on, man. Amen. I double be there. Come on. That's right. Put a stick on my shoulder. Uh, uh, Earl, what we used to say, if you want to fight me, put a stick on my shoulder and knock it off. Right? Then you put a stick on my shoulder. I'm going to tell you the truth. That God... And when you praise him, it will change That's the right. atmosphere. Yeah. That's right. Just when it's raining, you start singing something, and God will change the weather, even though it's still raining outside. I don't care about the situation, circumstance. If you have breath in your body, praise God and watch the atmosphere change. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You ever come to church, not so good mood? Yeah. You got a spouse, and you argued all the way here. <laughs> Kids acting up in the back seat. Come on, help me, somebody. Come on now. You got here, and, and Derek and Sammy and Jodina and, and Cherie and uh, Jay open up their mouths and start singing your song. And all of a sudden, you get back to the car and look at your wife. I forgot what we was even arguing about, bro. It don't even matter. That's how small it is. Amen. If you praise and you can make the circumstance and the situation change. That's right. Yeah, I got some praises in this house. Come on. All right, I got to go. So, so, so here are principles for practice uh, uh, this morning. And I won't be long before you, but they're worth looking at. This is how David got to this point of this declaration. He says in verse 1 and 21, the king shall joy uh, in their strength. The first uh, principle is declaration of the glory of God by this king. So in other words, David wants to make an announcement and a formal proclamation that there is joy and the strength of the Lord. Amen? When he's talking about strength, he's talking about the power skip that God possesses. I don't know of anybody else who is as powerful as God is. Right. I've got some names I can drop on you that I actually met some folks, but when it comes to God's power, they don't come close. 
to who he is. Come on, I know God can take a little bit and make a whole lot. Yeah. I know God can move mountains that people can't move. I know, I wish I had a witness. Come on, I man. know God can heal some folks when the doctor yeah. said no, God yeah. said yes, yeah. and God raised him up. Yeah. All you got to do is you don't believe that, turn around and take a look at Lamonte. Yeah. If he's here today, he's living witness of the power that God possesses. That's Have you ever had a problem that no one could solve and you gave it to God and all of a sudden one plus one did equal to? Come on, Reverend. Amen. Amen. Have you had a circumstance and a situation that was bigger than you are and you gave it to God and overcame it and God got the victory in your life? Yeah. Come on, I wish I had a prayer. Hallelujah. David says, I don't understand the joy and is in the strength of the Lord. And so when I look at the word joy, I thought for a moment. Some folks have temporary joy. Yep. Yeah. Only when they hit the lock. Oh, never mind. <laughs> only, never mind. Only this is a different church. Only when things are going right, right. they jump up and down and shout the harvest over. Right. But this joy that he's talking about, Dorian, is the type of joy that in the presence of God, good, bad, or indifferent, Come on. I'm still That's satisfied. Right. Oh, David says, I recognize Come that on. with your power to deliver, I have some joy. And then he takes joy and matches rejoice with it. So in other words, not only is he satisfied, uh, Teresa, he said, I'm glad that I can rejoice in the strength. And watch this. The power that God has when it comes to salvation in verse 1, I'm delivered. Is there any delivered folks in the house? Yeah. I thought you'd be excited about Hallelujah. being delivered. And then knowing that God has the power. Yes. Come on, yeah. preach. Yeah. Mm. Yes. 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 To deliver us. Yes. David says that caused me to have joy in his strength. His power to deliver and the, the salvation, how greatly shall I rejoice. And then he says, thou hast given him his heart's desire. So then, I know this verse sometimes gets thrown around and folks are asking God about their heart, but their heart isn't in line with the word of God. Right. When it comes to the heart desire, it's basically based on David having his prayers answered by God. All right. That's all it is. He said, because of your, your strength and your power to deliver, and the joy I have in your salvation and rejoice in your power to deliver, you answered my heart's desire. All I ever wanted to do was to get out of trouble. Yeah. That's all. I knew it wasn't right, but I needed to get out of trouble. Okay. And God's the only one. Okay. When money ran out, folks left. That's right. Yeah. Good times rolled past me, Earl, folks left. And then I was beat, bad, bruising, beaten. Bad and just God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I found, Imani, is that I have a friend in Jesus. Yeah. That's right. That no matter where I've been and what I've done, Lift he's up, able God. to deliver me. He's oh, able to yeah. make the power yeah. to set me free. Yeah. And David says, for that reason, that's my heart's desire. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Some folks take God as a genie in the bottle. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, if I get that Lexus and... <laughs> I don't think about the insurance, Jesus. Right. And then God, when the tires go bald with my head, I don't have money to buy new ones. That's why you see folk riding around in these cars and they tore up from the floor. Yeah. They got in them, but they really can't maintenance them. Yeah. So I'll take my hoopty any day. That's right. And ride around and thank God it's working. Amen. 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 But he's given him the hearts of his desire and has not withholding request of his lips. There's a saying that in the well of your heart, you should be able to draw buckets of praise with your lips. Okay. You'll see it later on, because I knew that would just stop right there. So, so point number next here, we, there's analysis of the blessings God has given him upon this king. So watch this, for thou forbiddest, David says, listen, you go out before me, uh, with the blessings of goodness. So, so this is something to really think about. Uh, God is already there even before David prayed. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, that, that might not blow somebody's mm -hmm. hair back, but yeah. Mm -hmm. God is already, he already knows. Yeah, right. He's already waiting. Right, yeah, right. But, but when I talked with Shikoko and, and, and Paul yesterday, a uh, great, great moment, uh, one of the things I said to them about prayer it is that, and we need to understand this, God just doesn't jump in your situation. Right. Yes. 
No, he don't. He has to be invited. That's right. You got to send him an invitation. And, and you know what you put at the bottom of it? RSVP. As quick as you can. Respond very promptly. Answer me. Please. I need you now. But you have to send an invitation. See, both people have it wrong to think that God just show up and fix it even though you know and he knows that it's broken. But if you don't invoke his presence or invite him in, he's not going to show up. That's right. He, he, you know, he's just waiting like those girls with that double dutch rope back in the project. They be turning in like this. And then other girls be like just waiting to get their turn. You know, I think you, not how many projects over here from section 16. Come on. God, I'm by myself. They be just back there. The girl be just busy jumping there. Right. Like, come on, girl. Get in here. Right. Come on, girl. And then other girls jump in and all together they're in synchronization. And they just turn back around. And they just work that rope. And other girls just busy turning. But the other girl was just busy waiting. And I seen three of them at one time. Yeah. Get in the same rope. But they just don't jump in. They gotta wait. There's a timing involved. Come on. Another girl is waiting. Like, come on, boo, get in here with me. They just come up, and that synchronization again. They just turn and I have a yeah, all that. I have a tough time with a single room. <laughs> and they be turning fast. And then you know, ponytail be swinging. Them. Man, they be just getting it in. And God is just like them sisters. He's just waiting for you. To say, come on, God, jump in here with me. Why don't you turn it real fast? And things are going so fast. This world is spinning around so I just need you to turn with me. And God jumps in with him. Shereen, he just turns with you. And he turns with you. Oh, come on, jump in. And God turns with you. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Come on. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He's waiting for his time. And he can jump in that room with you. But you gotta invite him in and stop thinking you in this by yourself. Come on, Reverend. So what nobody calls you? Come on. So what nobody answers your Facebook cry? Come on. I love Facebook. I, I, I'll be the first one. I'm, I'm nosing, I'm stooping around. Kim, I'm looking for something to read and, 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 and I'm at my desk. This on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at my desk at work. <laughs> You don't want to have fast and noise. I keep, I try to keep up with social media. I see my latest posts, and, and I'm all up in there, and, and I'm looking at stuff hitting me. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the world and social media. And every now and then, I come across a post. Oh, I broke up with my girlfriend today, and she ain't worth nothing. I oh, don't put that stuff on Facebook. Take it off Facebook and give it to God. Invite him in. Hallelujah. Stop playing on social media and likes. Right. Yes. Amen. Wait, somebody hit like. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later, you got one person. Hey, I understand you talk, and you still wait for somebody to hit like. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, Reverend. <laughs> Preach. God goes before us. Social media has its place, but it does not replace the God. Hallelujah. Who is able to deliver us? Preach. And whose strength is power to set us free. Right. Oh, I feel like talking this morning. Analysis of the king's blessing. So his glory uh, is great. David says in verse 4, he asked life of thee. Uh, God, I want you to give me life. And thou gavest him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great. And his deliverance, honor, and majesty. Uh, David lists the blessings uh, in verses 4 uh, through 8. And I want to read them to you because they're important for where we'll end up. For thou hast made him worse blessed. Most blessed than ever, thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. One of the things that I've learned about God over these years is that I, I know and I get excited uh, when I'm aware uh, that his presence is with me. Amen. That changes my mood. Yes. Some stuff you hear over the radar, Nicole, can change your faith in about three seconds. Yeah. But it's also good enough, enough to know on the left side of your mind that God has not left you even though the news has came. Come on. God is still with you. Right. And so when his countenance is there and his presence is there, I'm okay and I have a declaration of praise that I like to give him. Even though I know the situation and the circumstances have not changed, I simply know that when his countenance and his presence God is with me. That's more than half the battle already fought and won. Amen. Sometimes, though, you know, when I was in grade school in the faith, kindergarten, I used to think God couldn't see or hear. <laughs> right. And I'd be in trouble. And I'd be screaming at the top of my lungs, where are you? And Rob, he left me in the trouble. Amen. Only so I could learn a good lesson 
and have a testimony. Come on. Somebody needs to hear this right now because without a test boo, and bam, bam, amen. amen. There is no testimony. You're going to have to take a test every now and then, make it for the teachers that are here. One of the things that I detested in school is when, they, when you would walk in the room and you'd be all giddy and laughing and joking with your schoolmates. Man, what's going on? Yeah, let's go in the class. We'll get this one over with. And that's when we'd be in lunch and gym in two minutes. Right after this is over with, and the teacher says, clear your desk. <laughs> I hated those words. Right, right, right. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Clear your desk. Come on, Jada. Thank you, boo. Yeah. And I knew Nathan from that point forward, it was a bagel for me on that tent. <laughs> you know what a bagel is, watch this. <laughs> she ain't acting great, he ain't acting great. I was a market for him. Right. Because <laughs> I wasn't prepared. That's right. Right. Oh, <laughs> I got a teacher, there you go. Amen. You don't want to break, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Where are you right now? Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless your heart. We'll talk to you on the morning. <laughs> I'll be over your house after this is over. But, but, but the, the issue is that God goes before us. I need the, the children in here to say, well, uh, not for the big kids, but the little kids and big kids alike, that God goes before us and he's more than able to take care of whatever we're dealing with. Come on, And Reverend. David found out in this text that, that for the king, he trusted in verse 7, in the Lord. And so when I got to this verse in verse 7, uh, I want you to look at that verse real hard, and I'm going to read it again. Uh, For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. To trust is to rely and depend upon, to be fully persuaded. See, see, I, I believe people uh, in church are sometimes persuaded. Mm-hmm. They're not fully persuaded, but Paul says, uh, Paul says in the text, uh, Russell, that, that I've lost my mind for Christ. Come on, preacher. That I understand that if, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. Come on, really. I'm fully persuaded. I trust, I rely, I depend upon, and, and I, I'm fully persuaded that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. But David said in verse 7, Jeremy, that God. through the mercy of the Most High. See, mercy, when I was talking with, uh, with, with Chococo uh, and Paul yesterday, I wanted them to really understand what mercy and grace meant. Come on. It was my assignment yesterday. Not only talk about prayer, Bible study, and gifts, but I wanted them to understand before they left and have the foundation of mercy and grace uh, uh, underneath of them from which we can stand. And I, I'll share with you in a moment. The fact is, for those of you keeping score and may not know, mercy defined is you don't get what you deserve. That's right. 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 See, I know some folks on mercy right now. I got my ID hooked up and dripping everything. It's on drip. It ain't going around. I hope somebody changed. God will change the bag when that one is small. I need mercy. That's between me and you, Hillary. Even when that one went out, I know his mercies are new each and every morning. Great is yeah. thy faithfulness. Come on, Reverend. Morning by morning. Oh, new mercies. I didn't understand, Kim, what it meant to be a parent. So I had a child and, and, and to find out what my dad and them, you know, because I come from old school, they didn't do much talking. That's right. They did plenty of beating. Come on. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Tell them the truth. Hey. They give you that look. And all they need to look, they just start walking towards you. You know you needed the help of the Lord at that point. <laughs> but it wasn't no, you got what you deserve. But every now and then we would mess up and God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Father would set us down, I'm going on them right now, I'm having a terrible moment, would set us down and explain to us, this is why I don't want you to do that. Amen. That's mercy. Amen. Amen. And so I shared with, 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 with Paul and, and Chicago that mercy is you don't get what you deserve. Grace is you get what you don't deserve. That's right. Amen. It's do and don't. Don't and do. If anyone asks you, that's the easiest way to explain it. That I'm so grateful that God had mercy that I didn't get what I deserve and that he had enough grace that I do get what I don't deserve. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You ain't going to say nothing. But watch this. David is talking about mercy. And I thought for a moment, Georgina, why doesn't the passage include grace? That's because Jesus was not on the scene yet. Come on. But mercy in this moment, Ralph, is sufficient because David says, because I trust in you and your mercy never fail, listen, 
I don't care what comes. I'm going to take my left foot That's and plant right. it right here. That's I'm right. going to take my right foot here. That the vicissitudes and the storms of life blow as they will. That trouble and trials come. That illness come. That sickness come. That death come. come that you just stay firmly planted on your mercy. And whatever blows this way, Russell, I shall not be moved. Come on. Because of his mercy, Mm. Nothing shall blow me off the foundation of his mercy and his grace. Amen. When you're, you're in life and you're doing life, stuff's going to come. That's right. Yeah. You can bet on it. I don't wish it on anyone, but it's going to happen and it does happen. It's called life. That's but I know because I trust in him and on his rebel. mercy that he has for me and his grace, I have a firm foundation. Hallelujah. No matter what comes or who goes, I can stand right here and know that God is still able. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. He says, I shall not be moved. Point number next, expectation of destruction of the, all the enemies of the king. <laughs> you know, Jodine, I, I thought for a moment about this, this part of the text. And when you read it, David understands, and we should understand, that anyone who is your enemy is an enemy of God. Yeah. You got to understand that. Yeah. We take it too personal. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And, and because we take it personal, Mom Betty and Mom Dad, here's the first thing we want to do with the enemies. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. You don't mess up. We stick up our chest and we're ready to rumble. Yeah. Like it's a gang war or something. No. It's not our problem. And so naturally, and through the flesh, you want to take somebody on. Even if they've been in bed, it don't even matter. I may get beat up, but I'm gonna get my lips in. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about that. I'm gonna tell them what I think. I'm gonna say what I have to say. And Lord, the battle is yours. <laughs> <laughs> After I said what I had to say. <laughs> then we want to give the vengeance this mindset. Then we go to quote the scripture, but we already done blessed them. Come on, somebody. We done touched oh no, we don't curse. We done said something. <laughs> We just said some things to him, Josephine, that God ain't never told us to say. Yeah. Yeah. There we do. Yeah. And guess what? If you don't audibly say it, you say it up here, and God still hears it. Yeah. 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 I wish I had him in front of me. Can I tell him a thing? And then they show up like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Case came back to the last girl. Carol, my nerve. <laughs> Try to tell Sean about it, but won't tell them. But the enemies, <laughs> come on Ralph, the enemies David is talking about are God's enemies. And I want to share something with you. If you don't know it already, you do know it. God is big enough and grown up enough and bad enough to handle all his enemies. Come on. He don't need our help in the fight. That's right. You don't need it. What he wants us to do, <laughs> this is the tough part. I can't even look at you, I got my eyes closed. <laughs> he wants us to love him. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> really? Okay, I can open that. <laughs> he wants us to love him. Let him deal with them. He ain't asking never to fight, but to love them. Amen. Amen. That they may see God in us. So when Jesus gets, says, turn the other cheek and somebody don't slap me, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to bring the left. You're right. <laughs> I ain't that grown up yet. I ain't graduated that yet. <laughs> Come on, Mom, baby. Help me with this. <laughs> but I have to understand that God is already going to take care of anyone who opposes you. Come on. Amen. So from 8 to 12, David makes it clear that these aren't his enemies. They're God's enemies. And if you're reading the text, God is quite capable of taking care of all those who oppose him, no matter who them be. Find a neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, God can handle his business. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, and I need you to say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor, God can handle his business. Hey, bro. Right, bro. 
Yeah, God can handle his business. <laughs> Just sit still. Moses says, and see the joy of your salvation that God is able to deliver them. So as I close, verse 13, this is what got me. He says, be thou exalted, Lord, and in thy own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Yeah. So renew commitment of the people to praise God. That David says in verse 13 that God should be exalted, and in thy own power we will sing and praise him. That's what we do when we get here. Yeah. Uh, not only get here, but wherever you are, if you feel like you're in your car, you need to praise him. Sing a song in the shower. That's lift right. him up. Around the house, just praise his name and continually renew yeah. your commitment uh, with God. Here comes my closing. I shared it earlier with you. What's in the well of the heart is sure to come up in the bucket of the lips. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. And I'll leave that there. Amen. See, with the bucket, and uh, you draw water from the well. Amen. And so whatever's in your heart, I guarantee you, your lips are going to say it. Amen. Or your mind's going to think it. Amen. And sometimes you get bold enough and bad enough and don't know where you are. You will spit it out, my Robbie. It ain't time to do that. Uh -huh. and you can't bring back what you just said. It's already in the atmosphere. And whoever was meant to get it, if you're not in front of them, they still find out. I heard you say something about me. Oh, no, no, I ain't saying nothing about you. You must have, no, no, no. But the, the bucket uh, of the lips should express the well that is in our heart. So, so I thought for a moment, uh, 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 as I come down, uh, uh, this is David's declaration of praise. David had to deal with the Assyrians and the horses and the chariots, Henrietta, uh, and it's a nice piece when you read it, and, 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 and it does a lot good for me, but, but what about the enemies that I'm dealing with now? Mm. What, what, what about, Earl, the peer pressure that I'm facing in my life? What about the financial hardships that sometimes when one plus one equals two, I got more bills than I got money? Come on. How does that help me in this hour right now? Right. And, and so I thought about David and who else may have been fighting a war, Jodina. And God says, turn to Romans 7, uh, right about the 14th verse. And Paul says this to us from the King James Version. Paul wants us to know that you may not be fighting horses and chariots, but you're fighting. This is, this is from Steve's sermon last week. You just got to look in the mirror. Come on. And you're fighting. We've met the enemy, and the enemy's us. Sometimes the battle there is not somebody else. It's between me and God, myself and God, and I and God. And it's a struggle. So, so God says, I need you to turn to Romans. 14, son, and let me show you something. Paul says in 714, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, mm -hmm. sold under sin. For which that I do allow not, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Paul says, I find myself, yeah. Jada, knowing I'm not supposed to do something, I'm still doing it. Oh, and then Paul says oh, in the next verse, the things that I, I let me read it for you because it's better. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, there is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Here's the war that I have going on, just like David had. And my plea is, uh, uh, Russell, I need a declaration of praise, a reason why I should praise God. For I know that in me, there is in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the world is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I can't do it. I don't find myself doing it. I'm not able to do it. And so he has a dilemma and he needs someone to help him. And I think if you keep reading, the text says, who shall deliver me, oh wretched man that I am. I'm at war with myself Come and on. my flesh is back and forth and I can't decide on whether I should do good. But no, I just want to do wrong. And if I do wrong, I really don't want to do good. And I'm back and forth and I'm being torn. Just like them sisters jumping that double dutch rope and Jesus is waiting to get in for the invitation. And Paul says, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? And Jesus jumped in. He says, I thank God for Jesus Christ who jumps in your war and decides to fight the battle for you and every victory is fought every battle is won and there's no need for us to walk around with because God has given us 
a declaration of praise. Thank be to God that when I could not do on my own, Jesus died and set me free. It was his blood that was shed on Calvary. Come on. And now it's getting, I'm able to praise him. I'm free, delivered, set free, and healed. Thank God. Worthy God. Yeah. Have a declaration of praise. Yes. Oh, wretched man that I am. Yes. In other words, Imani was bothering his mind so much that he couldn't find anything or anyone to deliver him. Mm -hmm. And he thanked God for sending his son, Come on. Jesus, who set him free. That's Paul's declaration of praise. What's yours? Yeah. What's mine? Why do I serve him like I do? Why do I honor him like I do? Why do I just leave those things alone and attend to what he... Russell, there's nothing I like better than have a tea time this morning at 8 o'clock and be done by now. But what stops me from going to the golf course and when I know I belong here? Amen. It's Come easy on. to make a call, Nathan, and have Steve preach and I go play golf and yeah, I'll be back and then I'll be but, but God has done so much on, for us that on. there's no way I'm going to put golf before I put my God. Come on. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Yeah. I didn't come in here just to look cute and, and to show my clothes off, Nicole, and, and, and to say, you know what? It's a brand new day. No, I came because I have a declaration of praise. Come on. Because the enemy that was ripping me left side to the right side, God has taken care of all that. And has set me free. I was had some more saved folks in the house. Yeah. Come on. You've been delivered. You've been set free. This is your moment. Hallelujah. This is your show. It's your declaration of praise. Yeah, lift him up, Doc. You have to make a statement about what God has done for you. Come on. You can't walk around quiet, deaf, mute all the time like nothing happened. Come I don't on. know of any Christian, even if they can't talk, they'll flash a sign. Come on. Right on a crayon on a piece of paper. And the call would kill me. Our folks come Sunday after Sunday and don't want to. You need a jackhammer and a, a crowbar to pry that mouth open to praise you. Come on, Reverend. When you go back and know that God has done for you, some of us are on our deathbed. Amen. Some of us are dealing with an illness right now. And had it not been for the Lord on our side. Amen. You and I have a declaration of praise. I see the young folks look so pretty, so young, so vibrant. Keep on living. <laughs> My man and I was talking about taking stuff to help us move this morning. <laughs> and I thought Kim, I would run on forever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And now, Jacob, just getting out of the bed, Evan, it's a struggle. Because everything don't move like you want it to move. Come on. Sometimes I got to sit there. I told folks back home, I've gotten so old now. Hello. I got to rock to get up off the couch. I just can't stand right up. Come on, y'all. Come on. I know I'm right. Some of them ain't going to tell y'all that. But there's going to become a time you can't get up off the couch unless the third rock hits you and the power of the Holy Spirit puts you. Come on up, somebody. And all of a sudden you get a spring, you take about five steps and oh boy, I need a nap right now. Good night, everybody. We love you. Walking has become a chore. Stay young, y'all, as long as you can. But time will catch up. And it's good to know, my baby, on this note, I don't care if we laugh with each other, that God has taken care of even the next phase. That's right. And when I read in Revelation 19 that Jesus is coming, come on, not for war. That's already done. He's coming to take us home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But until then, yeah. I want to have a declaration of praise. Amen. I want to celebrate who he is. I want to thank him. I didn't have to rock that time. Hallelujah to the way. But then you have to rock on. Jesus might help you get up from here. But thank God for the power that he has. Come on, right there. To set us yes. free. To deliver us Hallelujah. and to make us whole. To be pleasant in his time. And he'd be pleased with us. There's no one like our God. And he deserves 
the declaration of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Every eye closed, every head bowed. I just need you to think for a moment. Pause. Think of one thing that you know and I know that without God, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. That's a long list, Pastor, and it's meant to be. And I'll start first. If I couldn't breathe his air, I was talking to a friend a couple of weeks ago. I mean, he was talking about, man, I just, you know, something's going on, and, you know, I just had enough of life. And I said, just thank God you breathe. And he says, yeah, that's true. I said, okay, we'll give him back his air. Right, right. Settle all that. Right, yeah. And then he thought for a moment that even that simple gesture, that the air we breathe, he grants it. Amen. We need his oxygen to breathe and to live. Those things matter in, in the minutest moment of our lives. I know there's a lot going on. I know there's children. I know there's grandchildren. I know there's parents. There's a lot of things we deal with day in and day out. But take a moment. Give God the fruit of your lips. Allow the well of your heart to take the bucket of your lips to draw and to praise who he is. That's right. I realized 62 years ago, I was on arrival. If justice had its way, I'd have been cut off at about 22 years old. Amen. That's where it should have ended. But 40 years later, <laughs> I know about mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Come on, Doc, lift him up. Everything that I've done, I don't have time to tell you, most of you know all of it anyway. But here's who I'm trying to lift up, that in this cause, just like David thanked God in the DOT, the day of trouble, the day of war, Paul turns around and thanks Jesus for the war that is in his flesh and gives Jesus the declaration of the DOP, the declaration of praise. There may be someone here this hour, I don't want to leave no stone unturned. And on assignment, I want to fulfill what God sent me to do. You may not have had opportunity to ask Jesus into your heart. We want to afford that to you in this hour. You could be young or old. Just like we said, the day of arrival is your birthday. There's another side to the coin. If you flip it, there's a day of departure. And that day, according to the word of God, is the appointment that we're all going to keep. It is appointed us once to die, and after death comes the judgment. Are you sure that your name is in the Lamb's book of life? That's right. Now is the time. The angels are waiting to record. The word says the angels rejoice over one when we learned about the prodigal son who came back from the far country. Come on home. The father is just simply waiting with his arms stretched wide. No conversation about you took everything you wanted and you left and spent it righteously and rebelliously. None of that. He just wants to embrace us. Because we who were once lost are now found. Blind, now we see. If that's you, come on home. We promise on this journey to walk with you, to be with you, to partner with you. We have struggles just like you do. And one of the things that I love when I'm witnessing the people is, no, I'm not perfect, but we are forgiven. No, we didn't just drop with a halo on our head. We raised more hell, hell kicked us out. Jesus took us in. Hallelujah. 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 To the blood of the Lamb. If that's you, come meet me in this hour. If you're in a backslidden condition and you say, Pastor, I left God just like that prodigal you were talking about. Now I want to come home. The Father says he's just waiting. He sees you from afar off. He'll run and meet you. And if you're looking for a church home, three things we do promise. We will embrace you where you are. We will encourage you along the way and we'll equip you with the unconditional love of God through his word. Amen. All of us 
are on the same street, the narrow one, the journey back home. But we know we need Jesus to come along with us. If there's one here today, come meet me. No one's